Tarvin Martin, and I'm from Farmington, Michigan. My whole family played high levels of sports. Grandpa was a Division One athlete. Uncle was with, won a World Series with the St. Louis Cardinals. Dad was a college athlete, football and baseball. So it was kind of inevitable. What I think separated me when I was younger was I knew that I wanted it more than everybody else. I'd always envisioned myself playing professionally my whole time through. So the way I trained, the way I thought, the way I competed was always at this level of I belong here, I belong here, I belong here. I played on a really good summer team, so you know we had 20 plus guys who were Division One commits. DJ the Mayhew, who's obviously with the New York Yankees now, we would push each other like crazy, right? Like, dude, get as many Division One scholarships as you want, because then if they're there watching you, then they're there seeing me. And I did have hammered in my head at an early age: you never know who's watching you, and if you're good enough, they're gonna find you. And it did not matter who you were. To me, I didn't care. Like, you're about to see something. My sophomore year, a buddy of mine had taken me to a CMU camp, and I saw the facility, and I was like, that's where I'm going to school. In the summer, I had a couple D1 offers, loved the guys, and obviously, I didn't hear from Central yet. I went to one showcase my in my high school career. I hit 89 a few times on like a Saturday or Sunday, I don't remember, but it was on the weekend, and on that Monday, I came home from school and had like five offers, and one of them was Central Michigan. So the second they popped in, I just, I took it. I went to college as a shortstop, and I failed right away. Like I got in there in the fall and I couldn't hit. I went in like talented enough and a high enough recruit where I was able to make the travel roster in the spring. And our coaches had come up to me and said, we're gonna make you a catcher. And I'd never caught in my entire life. The first time I ever put on catching shin, shin guards, I'd put them on the wrong way. So we get like 25 games into the season. My coach calls me in. He's like, hey, man, you know, you haven't played it all yet. We're going to redshirt you. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm a freshman. Um, but, and I asked him, I was like, but what is this catching thing? You know, I've been catching pens. I'm terrible at it. Got to be the worst catcher in college baseball. I don't play the infield anymore. Um, and I've never thrown. And I'm an 18 year old kid, so I'm nervous to talk to a coach. He's like, you're one of the worst players on the team. We're gonna have you here next fall, but you're on the chopping block. So I went back for that next fall as a redshirt freshman, and uh, I went one for 30 in the fall. So I had one hit. So I went home for a winter break, and I took a couple buddies with me. And over winter break, we were sitting there at Arizona State, told my buddies, I said, let's go to college here, dude. The heck with Central Michigan. I'll quit baseball right now. So I went back my redshirt freshman spring, and same thing, play the first like 20 games, I get like three at bats. I called my folks and I told them, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm quitting baseball. Dad was trying to be a stoic man that he is. He says to me, he goes, that's fine. I never cared what you do with baseball, but the rule is you have to finish out the season. He's like, you're not allowed to quit when you're in the middle of the season. I'm not, you're not allowed to do that. So I went and worked out at the facility on my own. And my thought pattern was, I just want to like feel this. I'm going to wear the gear. I want to see the facility. I want to soak this in because I'm done. The coolest thing ever. Sean Horlbeck, who was with the Chicago Cubs, was hitting it late at night one night. He asked me, he's like, how's the year going? So I'm like, not good, man. I hate it. I'm done. And he goes, oh, it's a shame, man. He goes, we thought you had the best arm of all the freshmen last year when I was a senior. Do you want to give another shot and try to pitch? And I'm sitting there going, it doesn't matter, dude. Like, and he goes, tomorrow at practice, throw a bullpen as a joke so that the coaches let you do it, but you be completely serious and make the team as a pitcher. I was like, well, all right, I, mean, I have nothing to lose. I'm leaving here in two months anyways. Like, sure, why not? So the next day I go to the practice and I tell our coach, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna throw a pen today. He's caught off guard and he's like, no, dude, I wanna go home, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, I'll rake the mounds, I'll put the balls away, I'll put everything away. Just let me throw a pen at the end of practice. Like, well, whatever, as long as you take care of everything, you clean everything up, do whatever you need to do, Harv. you know, that type of stuff. And uh, so I did. And as I'm throwing, he's walking away. My, our head coach walks in the clubhouse. He's done with practice. The rest of the team's in the clubhouse. The next morning, I get a text that says, come into the office. So I go in the office, and the pitching coach and the head coach are there. They go, hey, you're throwing a pen today. Get out of here. I threw a pen that next day. Did really well. Coach calls me in the next day. He goes, you're playing a Division II team next week. You're going to pitch the last two innings. I throw these two innings. I strike out five guys. And the next morning, my life changed. I took the Arizona State idea, ripped that up. Just as fate would have it, 
We're facing Western Michigan a couple months later. It's like the last weekend of the season. I'm pitching the first guy in the game. There's a bunch of pro scouts in my and I throw a fastball, fastball, bust off a slider, and I feel the vibration in my arm. And I threw the next pitch probably harder than I've ever thrown a baseball in my life. And once I threw that, I felt this thing snap in my arm. End up going to Arizona to get an MRI from Team USA's doctor. <laughs> and I'll still remember it, clear as day. The guy looks at my elbow and uh, he says to me, he goes, can you go back and be a DH and a second base first baseman? Because I, I don't want to repair your elbow and have you try to pitch again. But I had been told I'm probably not going to play baseball if I don't pitch, <laughs> right? So I tell the doc, I'm like, doc, I either pitch again or it's over. It's like, you need to help me. I need my elbow fixed. And he goes, son, and I remember this perfectly. He goes, you're from Michigan, right? I go, yes, sir. He goes, if I give you elbow surgery, you will be good enough to throw snowballs at your kid someday, but you're never pitching again. I went home, I ran, I came home, my dad looked at me and he goes, how scared are you? And I go, terrified, it's over. And I was like, I was so close. Like I was gonna quit, and then I was so into it. You know, you're on this roller coaster of emotions. <clears throat> and he goes, man, success is on the other side of fear. And I called up that doctor and I had Tommy John surgery. And uh, that was the best thing ever happened to me. Because I just said, I'm so scared of this. Like, I'm so scared of this that everything in my life is going to change. So I'm going to go to school better. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to sleep better. I'm going to think better. I'm going to have better people around me. <laughs> and I'm just going to outcompete everybody in everything. And that was what I did. It took me about two years to get back, um, which I did. And then when I came back, I was, you know, Central had moved on. So there wasn't really a spot for me to come in and pitch, and that's why I went to Mankato. I had two things in my mind. Be an All-American, win the World Series, and then I thought if we did that, I would get drafted. And I went there, and I went 10-0. I had like a one-something ERA. I was an All-American. We got third in the country. I talked to numerous major league teams and watched draft day go by, and no one called. I have overcome Tommy John. I have overcome getting cut. I've overcome being a bullpen catcher. I've won a national championship in the, in the best summer league in America. I have gone to a college world series in college baseball. I've done this and this and this. I had an awesome career. Like, what would I want to do to finish out my career? And what is holding me back from being really good? I told my dad I was going to win the National Pitch of the Year, and he said, well, what's that going to do for you? And I was like, it's going to just prove to me that I can do whatever I want. And, and my thought pattern was going to be every hitter that faced me was going to have to go home and tell their family that that was the best pitcher they ever faced. That was it, period. And I didn't care about pro ball because that was what I was going to do. And then right after that was done, I was going to go work at MASH. I ended up being the National Pitcher of the Year. I won it outright. I was a two-time All-American. I lost, we lost in the National Championship that year. I signed with Milwaukee. A week later, I went out there. I did really well. I was the first guy that got called up the full season out of the draft class and had a good spring training. And I got out of baseball. I came here and I was getting myself on my feet. And the thing that I've told Steve for many years, and I told my family this, because I had at this point I had a master's degree. Um, I was offered some coaching jobs in Division One baseball. I was offered some scouting positions full time in Major League Baseball. I was even offered to coach in Major League Baseball. So, in Mash was like getting going. It wasn't where it is now, but it was it was getting there. And I remember my mom had asked me, "Why are you going to Minnesota?" And I told her, "I was like, Mom, I don't really know. I go, but I do know that anywhere I've been with McGuigan, we will win together." I say, "If I'm with that guy." Him and I will win. I don't know if I want to be in a like a MASH pitching lesson my whole life. But I was like, but I want to be a part of what MASH stands for. And that human, I will win with that human. So he loved Nate and Tommy and them so much that it was like, well then I do too. And it's I mean it's obviously been one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. So for me I have this I have this clay of humans and I wanna help mold them the whole way through. Well, I'm not molding them at all for Major League Baseball. I'm not molding them at all for entrepreneurship or to get on the moon or to be a doctor. I'm not molding them for any of that. I'm molding them for the ability to trust their own thoughts and intuition to be able to go out in the world and do what they want to do.
And if they can have that belief inside of them, then they will they will have a fulfilling journey. Within the last four or five years of being here so many times and seeing so many stories and seeing people get cut from baseball teams in their high school as a sophomore, and then telling them point blank going, if you stay here, you will play college baseball, and then watching them play college baseball. Watching guys fulfill their dreams academically, academically, athletically, to play anywhere across the country when you know internally, you know their stories, what people said to them when they were in eighth and ninth grade. Like that competitive edge to believe in you, even if you for sure don't believe in yourself, that to me is the feeling that I had trying to make it to the big leagues. It's finding your big leagues all throughout your walks of life. You can come here and want to play Major League Baseball, awesome. But that is never actually your ultimate goal because the guarantee in life is that even if you do make it there, it ain't lasting. But what is your big leagues in life? So like, what is your vision? What is the thing that's compelling enough to you to act on your thoughts? And that's what this place does. It forces you into an environment of outliers, of people who are trying to achieve things and they're doing it together. And you see it at all ages. And to me, that's gonna change the world. Thank <laughs> you.